For some strange reason, I have always wanted to build a block wall. I heard that dry stack was a good solution for amateurs, so I decided to use that approach to build a bathroom in my garage. I ordered three pallets worth of blocks and had them delivered. These are the standard 8x8x16 blocks that cost 89 cents each and weigh 36 pounds. We cleared the area and used a chalk line to mark out the dimensions from my drawings. Dry stacking concrete doesn't use mortar for most of the courses, but you do put down an initial layer just to help level everything and attach it to the foundation. In our case, the foundation was our level floor, so this was pretty easy. Then we stacked the second layer without mortar. You can buy smoother blocks designed for dry stacking, but ours were the cheap ones, so we had rough top edges. We ended up deciding to grind off little bumps before proceeding with the next layer. Then we just went up row by row, stacking, leveling, and grinding. I didn't want to deal with the half blocks that first evening, so I left the one side stair step for now. That night, we rethought our planned adjustment and decided to bump the right wall back by another 8 inches or half a block. Most of the wall was easy to disassemble, but the day-old mortar at the bottom put up quite a fight, I was impressed. We started the mortar half a block further out and quickly rebuilt the courses. Since the blocks were already smoothed, it went up really quickly. I also bought some half blocks and quarter blocks so I wouldn't have to cut as much. Halfway up the wall, we decided to put in another layer of mortar. This tied the wall together better and gave us a chance to reset with a very level course. Then we smoothed that layer, and I went ahead and pre-smoothed the blocks that were already sitting on the pallet. We also worked on that little wall on the other side of the door. As the wall gets higher, scaffolding just makes it easier to work, and our set just barely fit in the small bathroom. A couple more courses. These door bucks are treated 2x8s. The boards at the top are to hold the concrete that I plan to pour for the lintel above the door. Slow down for electrical. Actually, I should have slowed down and cut the blocks and installed the electrical boxes and conduit while I was stacking, but I forgot. So I had to come back and cut out a hole for the boxes after the fact. This is just a diamond disc on my grinder. It cut the blocks easily but kicked a lot of dust into the air. A few light taps and I knocked out the hole for the electrical box. Back to high speed for adding the ENT boxes and smurf tube. The top row on the wall is the bond beam. I needed to run rebar and concrete through this course, so I had to knock out the openings between all the blocks. This is dusty work and better done outside. Back inside again, and it was just a matter of setting this last row. From this view you can see inside the lintel box that I'll fill with concrete as well as the smurf tube conduit that connects the electrical outlet boxes. To give dry stack wall strength, you really need to fill some of the cores with concrete and rebar all the way down to the footing. My mixer did a great job for me. Here you can see the concrete is sticking to itself, not to the mixer, and is folding over nicely in mixing. The slump was still high enough to pour into the wall. I found that each core took about two 80-pound bags to fill. After placing rebar in the bond beam, I filled the rest in with concrete. I'd shove concrete bags and styrofoam and stuff like that down into the wall to keep the concrete up in that top course and a half of blocks. Here I'm also filling one of the mid-side void columns from bottom to top. After giving it a couple days to set, I came back to remove the form from the lintel. Then we started on the surface bonding cement. Dry stack walls actually gain most of their strength from the surface bonding cement that holds them together on both sides. The surface bonding cement is sticky and includes lots of glass fiber for reinforcement. I also added a warm color to it. Again, the mixer did this job while Sherry and I quickly covered the walls. We got the outside done in one afternoon and evening. The next afternoon we came back and used less coloring on the mix for the inside so it would be a little lighter. A few days after that, I came back and used a wet sponge to even out the color and smooth things out a bit. After adding a door, we also installed a toilet. We don't need the portage on anymore.